Hey guys, Dax here with a post FOMC market update for you guys. Basically, overall, uh, the update was quite bearish. Originally, uh, the market interpreted it to be bullish because they sort of dropped some hints in there that uh, they might be slowing the pace of raising rates so you know everyone got excited and um, the market started to pump quite aggressively market y crypto and altcoins included but then power came out and he was quite hawkish which means bearish because hawkish means that they're more focused on raising rates uh, over a period of time uh, rather than lowering rates which is a dovish approach right so probably the most important takeaway I sort of took from the from the event was that he basically said they would rather over raise uh, and, you know, have negative effects on the economy, crash the labor market, et cetera, like that and earnings, uh, then under raise and then have to go back and raise again later because he said if they over raise um, <clears throat> or over hike, Basically, that they the solution to that problem is quite easy for them by adding stimulus back into the market, and he even referenced the ability for them to do that by look at what you know we did when the COVID crash happened in 2020, right? So he's very confident that if they over hike, the solution to that is very simple. If they under hike, the solution to that is actually very difficult hole for them to get out of, and can prolong, uh, you know, this sort of bear market retracement and inflation. Um, being running hot for a, a very long period of time. And uh, so that sort of tells me that they're most likely going to over hike and they're going to continue to hike until the market does sort of probably see a capitulation event um, or something breaks in the economy, which if that happened, I can't see the market not capitulating, right? Um, you know, some big companies going under, you know, banking institutions or something like that uh, or you know, it's something to do with the foreign exchange markets breaking down as well. Um, you know, anything like that maybe could force them to pause a little bit quicker, but it really did seem like uh, he was hell bent on getting the message across that the market really shouldn't be rallying into this. It shouldn't be taking anything he's saying as that the pivot is coming soon uh, and they're going to raise interest rates until inflation comes down was really the strong message that he put out, especially when a, lot, a reporter misled him to believe that the market was rallying uh, during the meeting. Uh, then he came out very, very tough uh, with... <laughs> what the Bloomberg guys called the hawkish greatest hits, right? So um, his message was the market shouldn't be rallying off this information. It should literally be rolling over. Uh, and so we dumped off quite aggressively from that. Now, I'm actually surprised that we're finding support. I mean, the market never just goes straight down anyway, right? But um, especially with crypto. So we'll just quickly look at the stock market. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, when we were through here, I was basically telling you guys that, you know, this might chop around through here or whatever or go sideways here. Then we had the big pullback after the Saudis basically, you know, told everyone that they're going to squeeze the oil market supply. Uh, and then we had CPI, which the market sold off very aggressively on, but then rallied straight away. And that always sort of gives you a bit of an indication that there could be a switch in what's happening in the marketplace uh in the direction that we're heading in when you pump off bad news it usually tells you that uh that you're running out of people to sell or panic sell especially and the major players in the market are trying to push the market up now which sort of makes sense because if you look at any of the data everyone is way over leveraged short way with too many puts in the market all-time higher puts and stuff like that so it makes sense that the larger players want to push the market up at least a little bit before we roll over. Now, my target was this box through here and this key weekly resistance taken from this level back here. And it was a really nice support resistance flip on the weekly through here as well. Now I've come back here and we've retested that obviously to the bearish side and rejected harshly off it. And then FOMC yesterday, which I was hoping, you know, would be dovish and send us back up to this line or back up to, um, you know, 4,200 and then crypto could get its rally up to, you know, the range highs again. But um, that wasn't the case, obviously a little bit more hawkish than what we're expecting. So we just have to play uh, to the way that that fold, that plays out. Right. At the moment we're just finding support on this nice key level through here of this range. I'm not sure how long this is going to be able to hold for. That was a very 
bearish message from Powell yesterday. So I would expect this to continue to sell off and this probably be uh, an, an, at least a local top here. I'd be surprised, very surprised if we see this sort of action, like, you know, how we rallied quite hard off the bearish news um, from CPI data. We do have CPI data coming out uh, on November the 13th, I'm pretty sure. Let's just go have a quick look. Uh, November 10th, right? So, I mean, that's... When is that? November 10th. Um, Thursday next week, right? So, you know, <laughs> the, the, that can actually that can actually have something to do with the direction we're going next, I believe. But at the moment, you know, if we do see this continue to rally and push up here, it does show a lot of strength, even though we're getting bad news over bad news, right? So uh, at the moment, I'm not 100% to show the direction of the market. We are finding nice little support through here, but overall, I pretty much sold everything that I had yesterday. Anything that I sort of you know bought while the SPX did this. So Bitcoin, for example, right? My buys that were in down here off the daily range low from here and here, uh, I did take profit yesterday through here off those. So I'm finding it a bit interesting at the moment that this sort of... <laughs> You know, we did have the ascending triangle sort of set up and it was looking really nice when this was uh, a nice big green candle up here. But obviously that got rejected quite nastily. And now there sort of is a little bit of hope if it can find support here with the four hour bullish divergence, uh, it could rally back up to here and, you know, we get a, another type of bull flag. So that is a potential setup at the moment to watch out for, though I think it is unlikely because I just feel like that was such a bearish message from Powell. I can't see the market finding a way to rally straight after that. I would expect us to roll back over and see range lows. I am quite surprised at the moment, the resilience of crypto, especially considering how, you know, things like the NASDAQ just absolutely annihilated almost back to, you know, it's all time low. Like it's really not far off. I shouldn't say all time low, but the low for this market, this um, bear market, right? And then you look at Bitcoin, uh, for example, and we've hardly sold off at all, which is telling me that there's a lot of relative strength in crypto at the moment. We've also had some altcoins uh, kind of rally as well. Um, you know, but the, the main ones that I've been trading sort of just, you know, being flat and sideways, nothing too exciting, to be honest, at the moment. You know, things like Rose sort of had a bit of a pump. Um, Matic absolutely flew overnight, right? To me, uh, that is just absolutely insane. I'm not sure why crypto is reacting so bullishly at the moment. So that could be a message that we uh, we need to sort of decipher. Uh, why is crypto responding bullishly while the stock market is selling off? Are we actually starting to decouple? Because you know, up until pretty much. Yesterday, every single time the market, uh, the, the stock market sold off quite aggressively, altcoins and Bitcoin would sell off twice as much, right? And now we're sort of having like this phase in the market where we're seeing um, big dumps in the stock market and, you know, not so much movement out of crypto at all. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting to note. Uh, and how long can it stay uncorrelated for is a very good question as well. But it's definitely something to take note of. Um, I'm not going to take a trade based off that, but it could be uh, something to think about. It could be showing us that there's a, uh, a shift in the correlation of the market at the moment. Uh, why is... Why is crypto pushing up while the rest of the markets are bearish and rolling over? That is a very good question. I can't answer it just yet, uh, but we'll we'll continue to follow and uh, we'll continue to take a look and see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Like Ethereum, for example, is pretty much back up to its pre-FOMC levels. Where if you look at, say, something like the NASDAQ, FOMC uh, is, is, you know, over a thousand points down from where where it was, right? Right, almost a thousand points down. So you know, it's had you know we've seen uh, quite a, a big sell off here, four or five percent. Uh, and then if you know you correspond that to the cryptos that we're seeing, you know, pretty much already back. Like Ethereum's only one percent down. 
So it's going to be interesting to see how resilient here uh, crypto can be and if we can hold these major support levels and continue to play this bull flag. I'm not too keen on like getting involved just yet until I see like a really clean setup. Um, I'm going to be traveling over the next couple of days as well. So not that excited to be holding large positions or anything like that while I'm on the plane. But when I do land, I'll suss out the markets and uh, potential for any positions. I'm not going to be that keen to hold anything that big going into Friday. Um, but potential is there definitely for next week, especially with CPI data coming out on the 10th of November. We could see some action based off that uh, to reverse uh, the market, especially if that CPI data is down, that does give them a bit of room uh, in December to, I th I'm pretty sure it's December 14th, uh, to lower the rate of hike. So we could see 50 or 25 basis point hike in December if the CPI starts to pull back. Uh, so CPI 10th of November is going to be very important. Um, so we'll see how that basically plays out. But at the moment, you know, I just want to see how the market digests this over the next few days. Uh, for me, it's not really anything to get too too excited about and be jumping into positions. If I had to be forced to take a trade or get an entry right now, I would take this um, for our bullish divergence on Bitcoin and just have a stop loss underneath here. Just in case this does play out into some sort of a bull flag, you could also do the same thing with Ethereum here as well and just get us a, a position here. But I wouldn't be doing anything crazy. That is for sure. Um, I'm still fairly uncertain of what the market is going to do right now. Um, the other thing that I also take note of as well is uh, the 12-21 EMA crossover, which we did have a crossover the other day. A lot of the times when that does cross over, you'll see it push up and then comes back into the moving averages and then find support on those moving averages and then moves up. So that's something I'm watching as well here on the daily. Um, the RSI didn't reach oversold either, which it didn't back here also which was an interesting one because it was quite an extended rally. Um, we didn't we didn't push into the oversold region, which tells me that this could still have another push higher before it's ready to come back down, right? So usually when the EMA 12 and 21 crossover is to the upside, um, I want to be holding and, and you know, be holding uh, BTC. So I'm expecting this to have a crossover to the downside, but it might not. So um that is another thing to take notice of that this, if these uh, EMAs can hold, I will be interested in um, adding some risk back on with my BTC. So at the moment, mainly holding USD because I sold all during FOMC when I saw how bearish power was. Now I'm sort of teetering on, you know, the possibility that, you know, the market could be just too resilient against selling off again because we haven't dumped after quite bearish news twice in a row now. So something to take notice of. So I am considering over the next few days, maybe moving some of that USD, my trading account back into BTC. Uh, but I need to see this not cross over back to the downside, right? Because you know, once we get across the downside, usually it stays that way for some time. You can go back and test this yourself, right? Whenever we get these crossovers, usually it leads to a bit of a rally. Right, here's a really good one, for example. Obviously, it works better in a trending market, but um, we're very, very flat and sideways at the moment. But still, it's something to take notice of, and it's a really good little strategy if you want to check it out. That's pretty much it for me today, guys. Not super helpful, unfortunately, but the state of the markets right now is very, very uncertain with the market not dumping off bad news twice is a bit of a good sign. But the other thing is the stock market has sold off pretty aggressively. So um, how long can Bitcoin and crypto continue to rally or not dump off if the stock market starts to make new lows? So keeping my eyes on these levels, the yearly low, it's 36.40 and uh, 3,600. And on the NASDAQ as well, obviously, to see if we break to a new all-time low under 10,470, right? Uh, and then see how cryptocurrency can react to that, I think will be very interesting, right? So put the 1221 crossover on, take a look at that, see what happens uh, over the next couple of days. But for me at the moment, the message is 
look very cautious because I kind of feel like the Federal Reserve wants capitulation before they uh, before they pivot and before they give the market a chance to relax. All right, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. See you in the next episode.